Hey everybody, I hope uh, your morning or afternoon or wherever you are in the world is starting off fantastic. My name is Jeremy Charm, and this is a webinar that has been long since in coming, uh, as Cisco has been announcing the latest and greatest changes to the CCNA. Uh, at CBT Nuggets, we have just been inundated, as we always are in any time Cisco does an update, with questions, uh, you know, what's going on, how do I handle this, what's the best thing, should I take the old, should I take the new, and that's what I'm here to answer. I'm talking about CCNA 3.0. Uh, specifically, but then I'm going to talk a little bit around, I would say, uh, CCNA in general and just some best practice. <laughs> and I'm just looking at this slide right now. Still to this day, Microsoft has not uh, decided that my name is a proper word. Uh, it cracks me up. So uh, so nonetheless, let's dive in. Uh, before, before we get started, um, I should mention that uh, over on the left-hand side of the screen is a chat window for uh, anybody that wants to ask a question through this. Now, as you can imagine, it's difficult to talk to you and read questions and actually process them uh, without just stopping and going dead silent. I do the best I can. Like I'm, I'm uh, looking at uh, uh, somebody typed in, hello, checking in, anybody copy? I'm like, hey, I'm here. Uh, so, so hopefully, and I'm seeing somebody say, we can't hear you. So hopefully... Uh, can we, if you can hear me, can, uh, can you type in, yes, I can hear you. Good. Yes. Give me a yes. Somebody give it. I can hear you. All right. Thank you, Johnny. Okay. Awesome. Okay. 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 Got it. Oh, yep. Yep. Fantastic. Okay. It is a small minority of about five people that can't hear me. Um, mute button is probably what you got to check. So let's, Let's get started. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, so I'm going to start off specifically with CCNA. And actually, if this slide looks familiar, it's the one I created. This was actually when I was talking about building a lab environment for your studies and things like that, what you should do, how, your mindset. And I happened to be doing a webinar on that at the same day uh, Cisco announced these new CCNA things. So I said, hey, let's let's put this in here. And obviously, nothing has changed. Um, I want to make sure that you guys catch the CCNA 3.0 update is unlike any update I've seen Cisco do to CCNA in the 16 years that I've been in the realm of Cisco. Um, every single time it gets more, it gets more, it gets more. Like if, if, I, if I were to show you the CCNA that I took back in 2002 uh, to, to step into that certification world, you would be like, I can't believe they called you certified. Like it was, it was so easy. It was, uh, it was pathetic, but I'm sure I thought it was very difficult back then. Uh, then they just kept adding more and more and I kept scratching my head going, this is insane. Nowadays, they are actually removing content from the CCNA and that's actually the biggest change uh, that has happened in this CCNA. So let me, let me say it loud and clear. Cisco has focused more on what is not in the CCNA in this rendition versus what is in the CCNA. Obviously, technology changes and there's there's refreshes that happen. For instance, you can see as I'm talking about an ICND one and ICND two. I mean, there's some new stuff on there, but for the most part, it's all fringe topics. And I'm, I'm trying to get inside of the mind of Cisco. And here's what I'm, I'm thinking. They're thinking is they said, OK, we've we've put in enough and we've now made the CCNA something that makes people decent at a lot of stuff but really good or great at nothing because it's so spread so thin amongst many topics. So let's, in this rendition, come back and focus in on the core of what routing and switching should be all about. And that's going to be a lot. You'll, you'll hear that theme as I go through. So let me hit the specifics. ICND1 brings back the RIP protocol that was actually yanked out in the old rendition. It was kind of like an honorable mention. It was there, but well, we're here to learn OSPF. OSPF being the more popular and complex protocol, Cisco said, no, 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 no. Let's remove OSPF from ICD-1. Let's, let's make that something more in the ICD world world. Uh, now, people are saying, so do I, I mean, am I going to use RIP? Probably not. Probably not in the real world. But it's good to learn because RIP is, it's like, um, oh, <laughs> an analogy that escapes me right now. I'm thinking like, you know, isn't there like if you learn to work on a car, like a certain model of car, like you kind of know them all once you, once you know the, the front. So RIP is kind of like, wait, like once you learn RIP, you're like, okay, I get it. I get how routing protocols are supposed to work. So then you only enhance your knowledge as you learn OSPF. A lot more big picture. And in taking the exam, you 
feel it. You feel it as you go through. The exam for ICD-1 is a lot less about configuration as it is, do you get the big picture? Are you, are you getting this? So is this the, um, uh, you know, and I, and I still glance over at the, uh, the, the chat and I, and I think a uh, uh, few people are still having trouble hearing me, but I'm, I'm going to go with the, the flurry of people that said they could hear me before. Okay, done looking at that. Um, I see anyone, you feel it as you take the exam. It is all about the um, big picture. Like this is, do you get it? I, I think that's the, the phrase I would say. Do you get it? As I was going through, um, for me taking the exam, um, and you may, you may understand this when I say it, maybe not. It's hard to unlearn something. Like when I take ICND-1, uh, I've, I've been there, done that, I, you know, for years and years and years. So it's like, it's, go, it's going back to, um, uh, you know, what, what we actually homeschool our kids and, uh, you know, sitting there helping them with math. It's hard to unlearn, like pretend like you don't know what three plus five is, you know, and, and put yourself into a, uh, you know, four-year-old's mind that is trying to learn three plus five. And you're like, why don't you get this? It's just three plus five, you know? So, so a lot of times when I take these exams, I'm like, oh, it's so hard to pretend like I'm looking at this with, with fresh eyes. But that's, that's the theme that I thought as I was going through, I was like, they just want you to get it. Do you get the big picture? More monitoring, more day-to-day, -day, because that's really what uh, Cisco wants the ICD-1 specialist uh, to focus in on. A um, couple questions that I, I want to take, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to filter it, guys. Jack, if, you, if you're doing this, thank you so much. Somebody is filtering the questions uh, so I can focus in on, on some of the key ones. Um, uh, I can't, I'm not even going to pronounce that name. This person is asking, what is the exam difference between version 3 and the old version? What is the reference for the new version in, in CCNA 3? I think, I think that's what I'm talking about right now. This is the biggest difference between 3.0 and 2.0. Um, when will ICND 1 3.0 be available? End of September. That's, that's what I am uh, literally, I'm taking a break from recording more of that to talk to you right now, and then I'm going right back in. Um, so ICND 2, this is interesting. So um, I'm going to show you a slide from, from ICND 1 in just a second. I'm hesitant to even talk about serial interfaces anymore. Um, so serial connectivity, just to give you a, an idea, um, is what allows your router to typically connect outside of your world. So here's, here's a router, right? Ethernet, we'll say fast Ethernet, uh, zero slash zero plugs into a switch right there. And then your serial link allows you to connect to some far away place. Could be a mile away, could be a thousand miles away, could be around the world. Now, everything is moving into an Ethernet standard to where the slow serial connectivity is going away and you're starting to see a lot of that be removed and a lot of the topics that have been there for years and years and years are going away. Now, real world, are they being uh, disbanded? No, they're going to be around for a long time, especially in developing areas of the, of, uh, the world. But for the most part, in day-to-day -day industrial networks, serial connectivity is gone. Everything's going Ethernet. Um, you start seeing in ICD an earlier intro to BGP and the modern wide area network connection. So uh, BGP, Border Gateway Protocol, it's the routing, routing protocol of the internet, but it's the most flexible protocol because you can tweak it and do all kinds of things with it. You can add little things to it, uh, remove little things from it. Um, it it's, it's very customizable. So you find BGP starting to be used for non-internet purposes. It's learning routing tables beyond the internet world, right? So you start seeing in our WAN connections now, Metro Ethernet, fiber optic cabling. Most people um, don't know this, but there are thousands of strands of fiber running across the ocean that is connecting the continents together. Our world truly is becoming smaller. And people are starting to say, you know what? It's a whole lot better to use that than to go to satellite where you have all of these different delays and challenges with that. So um, you're starting to see introduction to cloud and SDN, which changes everything. So um, the cloud concept and, and uh, my, my slide, how do I erase on this thing? Hey, oh, there, perfect. I got it. So the idea of cloud just means that now everything is available. You guys know Office 365. You guys know uh, Dropbox. You know, all these things that we fight a lot of times in the corporate world is taking over the world to where now a lot of the inter-VLAN communication we used to have to study so much is not as much of a focus because uh, everybody's just interested in getting off to the internet and getting off to the internet well. 
right, to where they can get out there uh, in terms of a quality connection and start prioritizing voice, video streaming. Um, I was just supporting a customer this last week that used a product called Zoom conferencing. And we forgot, I, I won't say we forgot. <laughs> no, we didn't forget. IT people don't forget. But we weren't notified that they were going to be using this Zoom conference system. And it was terrible. Their video conference, I mean, they had executives teams that were like, ah, forget this, I'm, I'm going home. And it was, it was pathetic because we didn't properly prioritize quality of service on that thing. And so it was treated just like somebody streaming YouTube. And it was using a lot of bandwidth and it ended up being a, a poor experience. So uh, Cisco has seen that and they're like, okay, we need to add that quality, of at least having that mindset that you can start diving into it. That's, that's technically the, the uh, specifics of uh, what, what is new on the uh, new CCNA 3.0. Now, I'm just seeing floods of questions coming. I'm going to grab a couple of them. I'm seeing one saying, hey, I saw a Cisco book for the 3.0 includes frame relay. Should we focus on frame relay? Um, no. No, you shouldn't. Um, and it's a travesty because it's such a fun topic to teach and to learn. But um, no, I, in, in what Cisco has said and what I've seen on the exams, I would not waste that brain, brain space. Oh, great. Matthew is saying, what is SDN? That is uh, Software Defined Networking. Um, this one is probably the number one question we get at CBT Nuggets about networking in general. Everybody says, SDN, it's going to change everything. You know, it's kind of like uh, what the iPhone did for the cell phone industry. SDN does for, for networking, and it's true. What SDN is, is um, point-and-click networking. So the idea behind SDN is if you get all the same equipment from all the same vendor, you can have a centralized console, if you will, uh, that manages all of it from a point and click interface and network engineers everywhere go, no, because my job is in jeopardy and it, it, all this kind of stuff. So SDN, first off, I would say is probably about 10 years out before it's going to be fully realized. The, the idea of SDN is it's starting to go across vendors to where they're all kind of designing their equipment to the same standard, but there's still so many missing pieces to SDN that it's, it's going to be a long time in coming. But the concept, you can see uh, Cisco starting to tickle the concept of SDN saying, hey, there's this thing. It's going to be, it's kind of like, I, there we go. It's like IPv6, right? IPv6, it's going to change the world, right? We've been hearing that for decades after decades. Same, same concept with SDN. It's in order to get there, it's a Y2 2K kind of um, uh, engineering that would need to be done to get SDN in every realm of the world. And no, that doesn't mean jobs for network engineers are going away. It just means that you evolve and you say, okay, I need to now learn a new way and a new way to integrate these devices and a new, you know, new way of doing things. So um, that's, that's, that's all I'll say on that. Okay. 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 <laughs> Too many questions. Okay. I'm going to move on, but I'm going to mention one more question as I'm going. Um, someone's saying, is BGP a big part? No. No, it is not. BGP is not a big part of ICD2. It's an honorable mention. It's like, hey, FYI, there's this protocol. A lot of people use it. This is what it's there for. And that's about it. So now, one of the key pieces, and I've, I, those of you that know me and have uh, gone through some of my courses in the past, you know that I'm always like, you got to build a lab. You got to build a lab. You gotta, I'm like a broken record, right? Um, you got to build a lab. That's, that's what I'm saying for the, the CCNA. And I'm throwing out the equipment recommendations that you could probably get if you bargain shopped under 100 bucks for an entire CCNA lab. I don't think you'd be able to, but literally I went to eBay and I typed in this right before this webinar and this was on the first page. So these two, two listings that I have right here, you want two of the 3550 switches and two of the 2621 XM routers, right? Um, those will carry you through the entire CCNA program. Um, will you run into some fringe topics that you can't do? Maybe here and there, especially if you don't have the right iOS version, the right software for them, which you can find as well if you dig around uh, the internet and the trenches of Google, right? Um, but but um, for the most part, these things will are solid. And the reason I say it's so critical is because when you take these exams, I've, I've, I've taken them and I've seen them, I'm like, Cisco isn't after, do you know the commands anymore? They're after, do you get it? Do you, I mean, do you get it? And I think the best way 
I can frame that is when I first took the CCIE, <laughs> I still remember it. I, 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 I literally made a list, and this should have told you how, how unprepared I was for my first attempt at the CCIE. I made a list in a Microsoft Word document of every command I thought I would have to type on the CCIE. I'm like, okay, um, IP address, uh, host name, um, line console zero, um, logging synchronous. Um, and so as, as part of my studies, I literally looked at the commands and I'm like, do I know what those commands do? And I felt pretty good on the flight over to San Jose because I'm like, yeah, I can look at this Microsoft Word document of all these commands and I, I can say what they do. <laughs> and I got killed the first time I took my CCIE and, because, yeah, I knew what the commands did, but I didn't get it. I mean, I didn't get the big picture of how does all this fit together? And I'm starting to see that mindset trickle into the CCNA from Cisco because they are all about, I was surprised at how, and I'm watching my words here, but how few questions actually required you to do something, like to configure something or to, uh, to, to, you know, what command does this? What would you type to do that? That's almost non-existent, it felt like, as I, as I was looking at it. I'm like, they're like, do you get it? Can, would you know where to look? Could you, because Cisco knows you can Google anything, right? And they're starting to say, okay, can you put the concepts together? That's what I would call mission versus memorization. So what this is, is this is actually a slide from a, a nugget I just recorded uh, for ICND1. It literally, I think, is uploading as we're talking right now, um, where I'm doing, I'm doing videos on... Uh, Labs. I'm literally building, and this is probably the biggest change in the CBT Nugget series that you'll feel from the old CCNA 2.0 version to 3, is most of the demonstrations I do are now, they look like this. Notice, hey, let me, let me grab my pen. Notice that, first off, I have a little scenario right here showing, hey, this is, this is what you got, a couple computers, a couple VLANs going into a layer 3 switch. Um, you know, here's the ports that are connected in this. So, what am I doing with that? I'm saying build this, my friends. <laughs> you know, use the lab equipment I just showed you on the uh, other page to build this in your own environment. And then notice what I have here. I don't ever tell you, here's what you need to do. Here's, here's the, the things to type in. Here's the bold command. You know, when you Google and you find a document, you're like, okay, I'm just typing in what's in bold because you don't get it then. You just type in what's in bold. You think it works and, and life is good. I'm saying, okay, connect the devices that are shown. Create the VLAN. Oh, I killed it. 51 and VLAN 52 on the switch and assign the ports to them. So, so stop right there. Step two, that's an exam-like thing to do. They're saying, hey, I want, you, I want you to do this. They're not saying type this command. They're not saying uh, on this switch. They're not saying it. They're just saying, hey, go, go configure these VLANs. So what it's all about is the mission, not memorization. Um, there's a guy at my church who, who was trying to teach me how to play the guitar. And I'm like, why am I so mechanical? And he goes, you got to practice. He said, you got to practice this guitar again and again to where when you're singing, you don't even think about playing the guitar. He said the guitar should just become um, natural, like you're strumming this guitar and you're not even knowing what your fingers are doing because you've played this song so many times that you, your fingers just move to the right notes. And I'm like, ah, I get it. I get it because in the Cisco world, that's how I am. I've done this so many times and configured so many devices that when I see configure VLAN 51 and 52, <laughs> oh, I'm so wanting to open the screen share with you right now and, and just do it. Like, it's just, I don't even have to think. It's typing in uh, config T. It's typing in uh, VLAN 51, name, engineering, VLAN 52, name, management. I go into the, the interface and I type uh, switch port mode access. It just, it naturally just flows to where I'm on a mission. I'm not memorizing the commands anymore. You should be able to do this. And that's, this is, this is the format of almost all of the things where I'm showing how to do something in ICND1 and ICND2 at CBT Nuggets is it's a lab where I say, I want you to watch this one time. And then I want you to pause this nugget to where you only see the steps and do it yourself and do it again. Play that guitar until you do this without, without even thinking of it. Good. So that's, ooh, ooh, ah, uh, that's the biggest thing that I've seen uh, between... Um, uh, the old CCNA and the new CCNA is a slight move away from all the config into concepts. And, and guys, I'm just gonna, I'm looking at the questions, and there's so many. I'm just gonna I'm gonna wait until the end. And I'm gonna try and answer uh, all of them 
that I can. Okay, so uh, question is, okay, should I take the two exams or the one exam? Uh, always take the two. Can I, can I say, if you're getting into this field, if you're starting into the Cisco space, always take the two exam. That would be the ICD-1 and ICD-2 exam, uh, 100, 105, and 200, 105. This one is for people that had a CCNA, and it's right on Cisco's website, and it expired, and they're just wanting to get it back. And they've been doing this for years and years. They just, they want to do it in less time. Don't take the, the dangling carrot of, oh, I only have to take one exam and because it's the same price, right? It's, it's more questions. It's more, um, I'm not going to say complex, but more, it's just time is your enemy. I've taken that exam. It, time is your enemy. You're, you have to be good and you have to be fast. And if it, the exam experience is already so stressful. I'm like, why, why do that to yourself? And it's, it's so sad. When you, when you don't get an exam, um, I'm like, save the emotional trauma. Just take the two exam. Okay. Um, another thing people are asking me about CCNA. Um, so do I become a millionaire <laughs> if, I, if I get my CCNA? Um, no, actually, uh, I just saw, um, can I, hmm, how do I, I'm sure I screen share in this thing somehow. Um, go, to, go to CBT Nuggets. Uh, CBT Nuggets has a blog. Um, and they actually posted just recently understanding Cisco certification. So if you're listening to the recording of this, um, search for that. On you know, if you if you if you uh, have gone to CBT Nuggets website, search for understanding Cisco certification. There's a 15 minute video that I recorded, uh, and they took it straight out of ICD one, where I talk about what does the CCNA do? What does uh, what jobs can you get? You know, is, is this better than a college degree? Why or why not? I mean, all the, from the controversy to the non-controversy, it's all there. So I'll answer this right now. CCNA does not make you a millionaire, but my word, does it make you more marketable? Um, so I started a company that actually does what I teach uh, seven years ago. It's now up to 25 people and it's continuing to grow. It's doing really well. And I have, I have gone through all the things I never thought I'd be doing, like interviews, like screening uh, 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 resumes, like, you know, all the things that, that you know management does, I've actually done now. And you know what I look for? And, and I'm telling you, this isn't just because I'm me and you're you and we're talking about Cisco certification. If somebody has a CCNA on their resume, I immediately say, okay, put that person over there. I mean, give them a call. Let's at least talk to them. It gets them in the door. The CCNA will not make you a millionaire, but it will open the door among the hundreds of resumes. I mean, I, when I put a job posting, I literally get probably 250 resumes. Imagine that 250 resumes. What are two things that I look for? I know this is not the topic of this, this thing, but it relates right to it. First thing I look for is, did somebody write me something short that is directed straight at me? Or am I getting a template? You know, hi, I think I would be good for this position. My name is, is Bob and, you know, choose me. I, I mean, have they looked at my company? Have they taken the time to say, who are you and what do you do? Right. That's the first thing I look for. And the second thing I look for is, you know, do they have a, a certification? Uh, and <laughs> some, somebody's going to throw a pitchfork at me in hearing me say this. I look at that far beyond than I do a college degree because I've had a lot of people with college degrees that, that come in and I'm like, Oh, you, you haven't even used this for a decade. So you, so you haven't even done technology is where I've had some of these conversations. I'm like, uh, okay. So your college degree didn't really. So, okay. I get it. Okay. And then we, you know, we continue to talk, but I'm like, yeah, okay. If they've got a certification and it's current, I know that person knows what they're doing. So it's a door opener. That's, that's all I'll say on that. Okay. Um, where can I go with the CCNA? The sky is the limit, right? Um, so you can see that th this is actually a wonderful slide that we made up for uh, ICD-1. Um, let me grab my pen. Right here is the core CCNA paths. Um, there's fringe stuff, <laughs> cyber ops. I, I think of a, a you know, guy with a single eye when I think of that. But um, cyber ops, collaboration, cloud. These are all topics that are that are kind of like eh, you know, if you really want to specialize, you know, even data center, um, it's a specialty uh, career. But these right here, shoop 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 shoop, those are where your CCNA can lead you. 
Um, usually people will end up getting a couple specialties. They'll get their CCNA and they'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm going for the CCNP and routing and switching because I, I really love that. And, you know, I really want to get more into wireless. Maybe they take a couple exams. Um, they don't usually go for all of them unless you do something like me where I just teach people. So it's my job to learn, right? Um, so, it, you know, it's wherever the road will lead you. And the, that's the fun part. That's the reason I love CCNA so much. I told CBT and I guess they, they said, aren't you tired of teaching the CCNA? I'm like, no, it's like the, the pathway to the future. This certification opens so many doors. And, and as you go through it, that's where you really start learning. Ah, these are the things that are interesting to me. Okay, so uh, last, last slide, and then I'll just turn it over to the questions as many as I can uh, hit. Tell me about the exam. I'll tell you what I can tell you. And I've mentioned a lot of things as I've gone through this. Um, the first thing about the exam is it's a lot more about do you get the big picture? Do you, can you, do you, do you get it? Not do you know how to configure a VLAN? Not did you uh, read a brain dump on you know, what question to pick? It's like, do you, do you really get this? Um, so facts, ICD-1, ICD-2, 90 minutes long and 45 to 55 questions that your exam is generated uniquely. So it will uh, tell you when you start the exam, how many questions you actually have. It is all about mission, not memorization. It is about intuition, not commands. Very few questions on what command would I type um, kind, of, kind of things. It's more about, you know, can you see an output and really say, oh, okay, I know what's going on. You know, C, it's the, you know, VLAN is missing from this interface. Um, as always, Cisco has not changed. You can only go forward on the exam. You cannot go back. Once you answer the question, it is done, which I know can be painful at times because you'll see an answer to a question later on in the exam. You're like, ah, I want to go back. You can't. Um, and these are uh, what I call feel-good exams. They're tough, first off. They are difficult as they always have. Um, I would say... Uh, you know, comparing to the old CCNA equivalent, I, they haven't gotten any more difficult, any, any worse uh, on the difficulty. But when you pass them, if you pass them the right way, you will feel good. You're going to be like, wow, I, I felt like my, you know, it's like um, <laughs> we've got a guy at CBT Nuggets and I'm, I'm telling you the truth. He is actually trying in a couple days to break the world record, um, like Guinness World Book, for the number of burpees he can do in 12 hours. Um, I'm like, that guy is amazing. Um, so he's going to do tw burpees for 12 hours straight and see how many he can do. So, so like at the end of that, he's like, oh, I feel good. You know, it's like, I, I, I felt like my skills were tested. That's what these exams are. And I'll compare that to other exams where I'm like, okay, they're just wanting to know, did I read the book? Right. That's, that's the other side. Did I read the book? Do I know the Cisco way of doing it? Yes, yes, yes. I don't feel good about those exams. These not so much. Cool. I am looking at the flurry of questions that are there. So let me, um, for the, I know I committed to you 30 minutes and I want to deliver on that. So that is the story. And I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time out of your day. And I hope this has helped you uh, in your journey towards the, the uh, CCNA. Um, so for those of you that want to head out, go for it. I'm going to take about five extra minutes and see how many of these questions I can get through um, just while we're talking. So. Uh, let me, let me, how could a study, okay, Jacob, how could a study plan look like I have, I have four years of ISP experience. Wow. Four years of ISP experience. So, uh, if you've got a huge background, then literally, I think you could just watch the videos at, uh, CBT nuggets. And one, once you're done with that, just, you know, take notes. I mean, if you've got that big of a background, Jacob, um, I would say just fill in the gaps, uh, go through, go through the nuggets. And if there's anything in there that you've never done before, that's where you would use the lab. Um, I, I mentioned CCNA. Okay. So ICND one is available at the end of September completely. ICND two, uh, will be, I'm not sure yet. I have to, I have to spec that, that one out. Um, for those of you that are wondering, you can take the old ICND one and ICND two. It is 90. 5% of what you need. Like I said, they mostly removed information in the new exam rather than adding the new ones. So um, use those as study resources too. Um, will there be, oh, uh, Shane is asking, will you be updating Cisco in the real world? That's a series I created um, that said, okay, here's the stuff the certification didn't teach you. Um, I maybe, I, I, but I'm not sure uh, because Shane, that's a great question. I'm not sure if I'll update Cisco in the real world because that's still the same. You still, you know, it's still about planning. It's about walking into a customer site. That was everything that I learned uh, when I created a business that CCNA never taught me. 
Um, when are these exams going to, when are these changes going to be reflected on the exams, uh, says Eric. Uh, Eric, that is actually straight on the Cisco website. Uh, ICD1 has gone away, the old ICD1, um, and been replaced completely. ICD2, I believe, goes away this week, at the end of this week. So that's when that will, everything is 3.0 after that. Uh, for those of you that took CCNA 1.0, is it better to take 3.0 for ICD1 and 2? Um, I'm guessing, uh, Rolando, that you're meaning the 2.0, because 1.0 has, has been there for probably a decade. Um, so, or, or maybe it is. Maybe you're talking about updating. So it, I would say it depends how strong your skills have been. If you took CCNA 1.0 way back in the day and you've never touched it since, I would still recommend going the two path. If you're feeling strong in your Cisco skills, the force is with you. Uh, then, do, uh, then do the all-in-one. Uh, can I still use the... Uh, 100, 105, and 200, 105 book as reference. Absolutely. Use, use the book, please, uh, Lloyd. Uh, Yasha says, Cisco book for the three. Okay, I, I mentioned that one. SDN, BGP, talked about that. Um, and, oh, uh, are we going to learn scripting to support software-defined networks, says Kuse? Uh, no. As software-defined networking as it relates to ICD2 is, do you know what it stands for? <laughs> You know, do you know what, like, I could probably, uh, the stuff that I've talked about software-defined networking in this little webinar is probably about all you need. Do, do you know what it is? Do you know uh, what what the future holds? You know, where where they're trying to move everything. That's that's about it. Maybe you'll, uh, I'll throw in some other Cisco-specific stuff on software-defined networking in the series. What uh, recommended hardware lab? This is it. This one right here. For CCNA 3.0, honestly, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming people don't have money growing on trees. If you want me to recommend a killer lab, <laughs> I could, but it would cost thousands. This is actually the, I would say, the minimum and the best lab to not overwhelm yourself with equipment, but get everything that you need. So that's, that's it. Um, what about MPLS, uh, Eric is asking. MPLS is um, in ICND2 as a topic, but it's more of like that is a method that you can use to uh, connect over a WAN. Uh, again, it's more this is the base concept, not can you do MPLS, right? Uh, I've done, oh, uh, Muhammad is saying, I'm, have I, I have done CCNA 2.0, thought of doing CCNP. Should I prepare and do CCNA 3.0? Um, if you have lost your CCNA certification because you didn't renew it after three years, then yeah, um, you, you have to do that before you go for CCNP. Um, Yashis is saying, can quality of service be explained in a simple manner for dummies like me? You know, it's, it's, it's actually very simple and you're not a dummy. It's uh, all quality of services. You got a router, right? It's got a thousand megabits per second as it's LAN interface connecting to your inside network, all your computers and stuff over here. And your WAN interface, unless you've got a ton of cash, isn't that fast. So you've got maybe a 20 megabit per second WAN interface, uh, that is connecting to some other site or to the internet or something like that. All quality of service says, okay, when push comes to shove and all these, these uh, bulldogs are rushing at your router trying to download stuff and upload stuff um, and it can't keep up because it's got a bottleneck, what goes first? That's it. That's all quality of service is, is saying, well, I want voice over IP traffic to go first because that's my priority. And then maybe database replication after that. Maybe, you know, so you set the priorities. That's all there is to quality of service. Piece of cake, right? Uh, 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 oh, uh, what are recommendations for a home lab? Actually, Mike, uh, there is a whole, that's, that's the last webinar I did, uh, before I did this one, I did a 30 minutes just on what you should do to build a home lab. Um, what about GNS? Okay. Ooh, ooh, good question. Yatin is saying, Yatin, yeah, yeah, Y-A-T-I-N is saying, uh, why use hardware when GNS3 is better and cheaper? Oh. Moment of silence for that comment right there. Uh, yes, GNS3 is free. How about that on the cost? But for people just getting into the Cisco world, you always have something missing if you just do GNS3. Doing it, I mean, literally building a network in your home or in your cubicle or something like that, it gives you something that you can never gain by seeing emulation. Emulation will teach you the concepts and the commands, but you'll always come up short. And that's why for CCNA, I always um, 
recommend getting the equipment. CCNP, use GNS3 all day. You've been there, you've done that, you've, you've got the foundation. Um, uh, uh, Greg Gores is asking, what about the Cisco 871? That's actually my old hardware recommendation. That was, uh, when I made that recommendation, that was for CCNA 2.0. And I said, if you can only afford one piece of equipment, grab an, a Cisco 871 because it's got a switch and it's got a router. It's an all-in-one device. It has most features. Uh, check it out. So I would say that is still, you can still definitely use that. Um, but I would now recommend, based on what I'm seeing in CCNA 3.0, get a couple devices. Uh, I was, uh, Matt is saying, I was pretty pressed for time the last time I took the CCNA exam. Are they going to give us a break this time? No. <laughs> no, they're not. It's still 90 minutes. It's, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's tough for me to pretend like I don't know something. So I finished in half the time. I think I finished the exam in about 40, 45 minutes. Um, but... For, I, I know every Cisco exam, when I'm taking it for the first time, I always feel like I'm pressed for time. Uh, million dollar question says, Brat, when will CCNT be completed at CBT Nuggets? September 30th, end of the month. Uh, is IP version 6 still included in ICD-1, says Johnny? And yes, it is, but it will be an honorable mention. It doesn't get too in-depth at all. Um, okay. And I'm, <laughs> I'm out of time. I'm actually past my time. Um, but I am, uh, I'll finish, I'll finish this one. Uh, Sujay at the bottom, at last, most recent question to come in is saying, I have to ask Juniper versus Cisco. What do you think? That's a great one to end with Cisco. <laughs> it, well, and, uh, the only reason I say that is because you love what you know. Why do you think Cisco invests so much? It, the certification program is not profitable for them, by the way. It is all about indoctrinating people with this is how amazing Cisco is. And once you learn that, it is so hard to peel somebody away from using Cisco equipment. And I will say, I know Anthony Sequeira uh, teaches Juniper at CVT Nuggets. I have a Juniper switch. I feel like a trader. Um, and I started to learn it and I'm like, ah, I got, fr I tried to create a VLAN. That was it. I tried to create a VLAN on a Juniper switch. I spent about 20 minutes and I'm like, forget it. This is stupid. <laughs> and I said, I'm going back to my Cisco world. So I still have a Juniper switch. It was really expensive sitting in my closet, um, uh, sucking up power with nothing plugged into it because, um, Cisco in my mind is that much better. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, I hope you guys have gotten a lot out of this. Uh, and if you have any other questions, feel free to chat them in. I know our mentors behind the scenes are often watching those and will uh, email you guys directly and get answers to you. With that being said, Good luck in all your CCNA journey. Fare thee well.